en question. Le président, veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now back in session. L'audience est reprise. Nous avons fait un peu de temps. ដែលអង្គគម្រាបានគ្រូងទុកនៅក្នុងដំណើរការសម្ដាប់ថ្ងៃនេះគឺការស្ដាប់ Hearing this uh, witness, a choisi de reporter la déposition his testimonies témoin. will be heard uh, in the afternoon session Nous instead. Donc que le témoin, cet and before we proceed, uh, the chamber would like uh, to make an oral decision on the right to remain silent. The trial chamber notes the motion involving Ian Sari and Kyo Sampon's right to remain silent. Documents E-164 and E-174. It further notes that Nguyen Chia, after having made statements allegedly relevant to the first segment of the trial, has also indicated that he might exercise his right to remain silent. Pursuant to Article 35, New G of the ECC law, an accused shall not be compelled to testify against himself or to confess guilt. A le droit Therefore, de ne pas être forcé de témoigner contre lui-même ou de s'avouer coupable. To Aussi, to un accusé ne saurait être contraint de répondre à des questions qui lui sont posées. However, in assessing the guilt or innocence Cependant, of the accused in its verdict, dans son jugement, la chambre the chamber shall consider all of the coupable, evidence that has been put before it and subject to examination, including the testimony of the accused and the manner in which he testifies. In this regard, and where the accused elects to alternate between silence and giving testimony, this may be noted by the chamber when assessing his credibility. The relevant international jurisprudence indicates that adverse inference from selective decisions to remain silent may be drawn. In any case, the Chamber shall not base a finding of guilt exclusively on an adverse inference from tiré or drawn from silence du silence de ce dernier this is the decision voilà on the right to remain silent le droit de garder by le the accused persons next the chamber will proceed uh, en ce qui concerne les accusés la chambre session. va maintenant poursuivre avec une séance à, à huis clos we are not uh, hearing the testimonies of the Witness, as the, in, uh, as the chamber has indicated, uh, we are now dit, coming into the closing session. Pas le témoin ce matin. Concerning internal rule 28, sub-rules 8 uh, and 9, the chamber would like to have all the 
issues uh, properly resolved uh, before we can proceed to hearing the testimonies of the witness. So the following session will be in camera. And the in-camera session will last until lunch break. The public and parties are now uh, advised to be informed. Uh, court officer instructed to Soyez draw and close the curtain, and AV booth officers are instructed to ensure that the audio uh, is fermé. disconnected uh, from uh, uh, to the public gallery. Uh, to the public, uh, and the public is advised uh, to uh, be dismissed uh, from the public, the public gallery since uh, the chamber is now uh, having the in camera session. The President, um, security personnel are now instructed to escort or to just usher the uh, public uh, to outside of the public gallery. The President, uh, due to the problem interpreters may encounter if the curtain is drawn as it is now, the chamber The president, uh, Le president, we know that uh, we seem to have experienced a lot of problems concerning the technical issues uh, with regard to the interpreting for the whole morning. Again, due to the fact that uh, interpreters could have encountered problems in rendering uh, when the curtain is um, Donc, en raison des like difficultés d'interpréter lorsque l'on ne voit pas qui parle, parce que les rideaux sont fermés. Le Président continue due to technical problem concerning the interpreting service en raison des problèmes techniques liés à l'interprétation to put it simply if the curtain is dit, drawn close si like this uh, the interpreter will uh, be put at the disadvantage uh, so court officer is now instructed uh, Donc, to draw open the curtain after 
the last member of the public has left Et ce, après que la dernière personne dans la tribune réservée au public ait quitté. The president, uh, we know that uh, Council for Nguyen Chia uh, was on his feet. Uh, you may now proceed. Your Honours, I haven't heard a word. The President, International Court Prosecutor, you may now proceed. I, I just wanted to uh, let uh, others know, <coughs> show that uh, Channel 2 wasn't working, but when I switched to Channel 8, I was getting an English translation on that. I'm not sure why, why that is, but if, uh, if you switch to the higher channels, that for some reason the translation is coming through. Pour le français, peut-être pouvez-vous essayer le canal 9 pour Perhaps ceux qui ont du problème. Est-ce que sur le canal 9, vous entendez ce qui se passe Oui. Est-ce que toutes les parties entendent maintenant euh, dans leur euh, casque les traductions able to listen to the interpretation now? The President, uh, Council for Nguyen Chia, could you advise the, the Chamber whether you can receive, uh, or can you hear, this, uh, because when we were uh, making oral uh, decision, you were on your feet. You may now Thank you, Your Honor. I can hear you now on Channel 8, but only just now. So I didn't get anything earlier. I didn't hear anything earlier. I didn't hear anything earlier. I didn't I missed your... Uh, your For your information, Channel 8 always oui, has the English interpretation, but this is the channel apparently for English uh, when the anglais, session is closed. Channels 7, anglais. 8 and 9, Donc, les but if you want to tune to Channel 8, 8 you will always hear the English translation. Si vous êtes au canal 8, vous Thank you. Toujours les Maître Yannouti, je vous remercie. The President, Council for Nguyen Chia, uh, would you wish to uh, advise the Chamber whether you have any other unresolved issues before you now? Technical issues? Are you, are you referring to the substance of, of the closed session or are you referring to technical issues? I've got plenty of issues. Écoutez, j'ai toutes sortes de problèmes. Des problèmes juridiques et des problèmes techniques. Donc il faut me dire lesquels. The President, the President. Uh, just now, during the time when I was reading the oral decision concerning the right to remain silent, le droit à garder le silence, I also ruled on the second issue concerning une sur uh, the difference of uh, hearing the testimonies of the witness because the chamber témoin, had to go into in-camera session to resolve the issues pending concerning Rule uh, 28, sub-rules 8 and 9 as raised uh, by the party. And the chamber indicated that only after these matters uh, have been um, properly resolved, then the chamber would uh, proceed to hear the testimony de of Mr. So Tung in the afternoon session. And these uh, 
matter has to be resolved because we need to uh, be prepared for the future uh, proceedings concerning testimonies of other witnesses. And while rendering this decision, we noted that you were on your feet and we did not really hand the floor over to you because uh, we were in the midst of something and uh, we indeed respect your right uh, to uh, have the floor but only after we Nous rendered our decision. So uh, have you already got uh, the, the, the rendition of the, the oral decision, or would you uh, wish it to be repeated? Uh, I did most of it, Your Honor. My colleague was on his feet Yannick simply to advise you that Nunchia would be waiving his right to be present for the afternoon session when it was Nunchia not yet clear that we were going into closed session. So that's why Mr. Pao was on his seat. Then, then, uh, after the curtains closed, you made some remarks, Your Honor, Mr. President. I didn't get any of those. So I, I don't know what you said there. I, I, I heard what you've just repeated. I heard that the first time. Then you closed the curtains and you said something else. I didn't get any of that. That's when I was on Channel 2. So I don't know what you said. Did, did you ask me to stand up and make submissions? Or? Est-ce que vous m'avez demandé de me lever et de présenter mes arguments? Shall I sit down? Est-ce que je voulais que je me rassoie? The President, uh, you may be seated. Indeed, uh, the Chamber would like uh, to proceed to Judge Laverne. Pour le juge Laverne. To pour raise some questions or to address the some pending issues concerning Rule 28, subparagraphs 8 and 9. We shall endeavor to resolve this as soon as possible before we can hear the witness in the afternoon session and other witnesses. Judge Lavergne, you may now proceed. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Effectivement, yes. avant de Thank redonner you, la parole aux partis, la Chambre tient à apporter un certain nombre d'éclaircissements. Like euh, nous avons profité de la we suspension pour uh, contacter l'unité de soutien aux uh, experts et témoins qui nous, ont, qui nous a indiqué unit, que uh, le témoin que nous avons entendu ce matin a été uh, contacté was contacted and that a staff member from that unit met him on the 20th of December and informed him of any issues that may arise regarding witnesses' rights and the right not to incriminate himself. And that the witness stated that he did not Ceci étant, la Chambre aussi rappelle la pratique qu'elle avait mise en place dans le cadre like du procès 0 pratique consistait à euh, one, la mise en place d'une équipe d'avocats qui of euh, sont à la disposition des témoins qui comparaissent à la, devant, la, devant la Chambre lorsque des problèmes d'auto-incrimination sont susceptibles de se poser. When la Chambre rappelle que cette équipe de d'avocats est constituée d'avocats qui ont reçu une formation, that that formation à laquelle la défense ainsi que les procureurs ont participé. The, both the defense and the prosecution this practice was La Chambre également souhaite 001. Euh, faire part de, de, de son étonnement quant à la, like aux demandes qui ont été présentées ce matin par l'équipe de Nunchia. Euh, étonnement parce que euh, nous souhaitons quand même rappeler la règle 28-8. We would like to substance, remind all parties et of rappeler que uh, rule 28, cette règle prévoit so que si une partie se rend compte que la déposition d'un témoin risque d'incriminer son auteur, il doit informer la Chambre, effectivement, ce qui a été fait, mais la règle précise bien, si possible, à l'avance. 
specifies si possible, that, if possible, it should be in advance. La Chambre, euh, sauf erreur de ma part, Unless euh, prend note I am que les parties sont informées des témoins qui doivent être entendus dans le cadre de ce segment du procès depuis plusieurs mois. Alors, à mon avis, il y a deux ago. questions qui se posent. Soit, in my opinion, c'est une question de manque de préparation. Arising. Either qui fait que l'équipe de Nuncia s'est rendue compte simplement à l'audience que ce type de problème pouvait se poser, soit il s'agit de la part de l'équipe de Nuncia ou d'une manœuvre délibérée et nous notons que ce type team. de comportement peut avoir, peut avoir pour effet d'impressionner le témoin qui doit être entendu. Be aimed at Alors, à moins que l'équipe Nuncia ait d'autres explications à nous donner, mais euh, ni rassurant de se dire qu'il y a peut-être un problème de manque de préparation, et encore moins rassurant de se dire qu'il y a peut-être une volonté d'impressionner un témoin. Alors, souhaiterions en tout cas que pour l'avenir, si ce genre de problème se devait se poser à nouveau, que ceci soit fait longtemps et si possible, a Je crois que les choses doivent être dites tout à fait clairement. Je ne sais pas, Monsieur le Président, ou si certains de mes collègues veulent ajouter advice. quelque chose. À ce que je, dit. je pense en tout cas que ce qui concerne le in any témoin case, I believe that euh, qui devait être entendu ce matin, il sera entendu cet après-midi. Et nous ferons tous nos efforts pour que le cas échéant, il puisse bénéficier de ses sens un avocat s'il le souhaite. And we will endeavor to make sure that witness is uh, for the services of an a lawyer when it is possible. So, I now hand over to uh, Judge uh, Sylvia Cartwright. Thank you, President. This, um, uh, uh, I um, have only one matter to add to uh, what Judge Levin no, no, no interpretation. The President, I think I heard French uh, in Khmer Channel now. Yes, uh, Judge, uh, you may uh, proceed. Thank you, President. Is the translation? No, no translation. Uh, Est-ce que l'on entend le français sur le canal français Ah, fort bien. Le président. Président. Right Est-ce que cela fonctionne correctement maintenant Est-ce que chaque canal... Euh vous donne la langue qui correspond à ce canal. Le Président, again, I would like to hand over to uh, Judge uh, Sylvia Cartwright. Au juge Sylvia Cartwright, vous avez la parole. We'll try again. Is there interpretation Bien. Alors, est-ce que vous recevez, Monsieur le Président, est-ce que vous recevez l'interprétation en Khmer Bien. 
Yes, I have just one Alors, matter to add to what Judge Laverne uh, said, uh, uh, with your permission, President. Dit, le juge uh, it is um, President, not foreseen by the Chamber that in future uh, such an application be made in open court and in the presence of the witness, that is, uh, an application témoin, that the Chamber reminds a witness of his um, rights concerning self-incrimination. En and de I emphasize that any such applications should be made in advance, but uh, if by reason of um, si something uh, unusual occurring or lack du, of preparation, uh, a party becomes aware only prévu, when that uh, witness si is giving evidence, the proper approach to take de la is témoin, to seek la uh, an in-camera hearing pursuant to Rule 28.8 without any further uh, comments being made, which could leave the Chamber to uh, infer lack of preparation or a deliberate attempt to uh, influence a witness. So there is no need for a lot of detail to be uh, indicated. It is sufficient to make an application pursuant to Rule 28.8 for an in-camera hearing. Thank you, President. passe en huis clos conformément à la règle 28.8. Merci, Monsieur le Président. May I respond? I'd just like to make it very clear that it's not a lack of preparation, it's not a deliberate ploy. The issue arose this morning, this morning when the witness made it very clear that his rights, that he was unclear of the full extent of his rights. That's when the issue arose. The witness said this morning, in response to the preliminary questions by the President, that he was not completely clear. Our position is that the warning, the Rule 38, uh, excuse me, the Rule 28 caution, needs to be much more comprehensive. Dans ce -là que nous avons I made that request part, immediately pursuant uh, to Rule 28.8 quote, in advance of the testimony of the witness. La de la That's what Rule 28.8 says. The President went through the preliminaries le as the prosecutor rose to his feet and asked his first question at the beginning of the testimony. I rose to my feet and made the, uh, made the remark. So I think I was well within the terms of Rule 28.8. I made the application in advance of the testimony of the witness. As I said earlier today, I didn't reveal anything about the substance of the witness's testimony, which that in-camera aspect of this rule is designed to protect. I didn't suggest that the witness had done anything. I didn't read from his testimony. I didn't give anyone the impression that the witness had specifically done anything. I raised the issue that there may be an issue with respect to self-incrimination. Everybody has that obligation. Everybody in this courtroom has that obligation, not just us, not just us. And I should note that the international co-prosecutor's comments with respect to Doik's potential liability with respect to M13 arose well after this briefing with Weisu. I would suggest that that is something clearly that the witness could not have been apprised of, that the prosecution's firm position that future prosecutions are always a possibility. That needs to be put to the witness. The witness needs to understand that. He was not apprised of that at this waste of briefing, I'm sure, because that was nobody's position at the time. So that would be all I have to say about that. Thank you. I, the international co-prosecutor, you may proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Merci, Monsieur um, a, cu a couple of points. <coughs> First, uh, I do think it's important for the trial chamber to make very clear <coughs> that these types of applications and issues need to be done in advance and outside the presence of the witness. I think it's highly dubious to interpret the words in advance of the testimony of the witness to allow you to do it as a witness is about uh, to answer a question. That clearly, uh, this is a, is a matter that needs to be done in advance and outside the presence of the witness because to raise these issues in front of a witness uh, uh, raises a risk, a risk that I think we are now well facing with, with the current witness that they will be intimidated, uh, that they will, there will be a chilling effect, and that they will be concerned uh, to testify. And it was not just at the outset of the question where this tactic was engaged in. Um, literally, 
when the question was put to the witness, la, were you the bodyguard faite, of Noon Chea, spécifiquement lorsque the la same question a été posée au témoin de savoir s'il si avait été le garde du corps There de Noon Chea. No possible way in which an answer to that question would incriminate the witness. It is very clear that the incrimination that counsel were worried about were of their own client. Now, there will be, as a general matter, there will be witnesses clients. in these proceedings Il who have given testimony and will be called upon to give testimony in which they will acknowledge participation in crimes. Et and in those situations, we do have to uh, prepare and, and understand and have a clear procedure. This witness, however, has given no testimony that implicates himself in the commission of crimes. And, and that is why we were very troubled uh, by, by what happened in court this morning. Um, in addition, uh, we, I think we have an issue now with this particular witness. Um, some, I'm not sure whether everyone is, is familiar with the entire history of this witness, so let me just brief, briefly summarize. Uh, this witness was interviewed initially back in 2007, um, at which time uh, he denied uh, that he was the bodyguard of Nunchea. Um, two years later, uh, he was brought um, to the ECC offices uh, and participated in a con confrontation with Deutsch, in which Deutsch identified him as a messenger of Noon Chea who came and, and received confessions from him. Uh, at that, at, uh, during the confrontation, the witness continued to deny his role. However, the next day, he came back Le and gave il a detailed revenu, statement for two days in which he acknowledged that he was Nunchea's bodyguard dans and gave a uh, lengthy evidence regarding uh, the, the activities. Uh, activities. Now, these activities um, related to um, Nunchea's role in going to the provinces, meeting with leaders there, uh, and the issue of confessions or documents being delivered between Doi and Nunchea. But there was no testimony, certainly, that incriminated the witness. Um, but now, we have a witness who, once again, seems to be concerned and is retreating uh, in his testimony. Et qui, uh, and and, and I, there's no way for us to know for sure whether it was due uh, to the conduct of counsel, but we do have a Nous problem here. Si so it is very important matin, that we avoid any possibility of this in the future. Uh, with regard to this witness, obviously we can confront him with his statements. Témoin, uh, I would submit perhaps we will be able to um, uh, deal with the problem that way. Perhaps uh, we maybe need to make a submission to this court that a confrontation with, with Doik needs to happen again in court where Doik is asked in open court what to again identify whether this person was the messenger bodyguard of Nunchea. However, before we get to that, we will endeavor uh, to pursue through, through examination of the witness reference to his prior statements, témoins, uh, and we will try that first. But I do think there is a problem going on with this witness. Cela uh, uh, while his testimony does not incriminate him in, si in, in, any, in any crimes from the period of Democratic Kampuchea, um, uh, I wasn't sure whether, whether he's being appointed a lawyer. But if for no other reason, because of his testimony uh, having changed once, and now the testimony he's giving in court, um, he may well be served to have a lawyer to advise him on those issues, if nothing else. Uh, it was not clear to me 100% as to whether the court had indicated that he was being provided a lawyer, but I think that that would be appropriate at this time. Um, but our, Claire, our, so our si concerns are, one, that this not cas, happen with future witnesses, ce genre de uh, ne and two, uh, uh, just that the court understand that because of what has happened here, um, uh, we're going to have to uh, uh, make some effort uh, to, uh, to confront this witness uh, with his prior statements. Uh, uh, th th those are my comments on the matter. Soit confronté à ses propres propos précédents. Voilà ce que j'avais à dire, Monsieur le Président. President. Merci.
the national lead co-lawyer for the civil parties. You may proceed. The lead co-lawyer. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. What uh, was raised by the Defence Council for Nuntier that uh, he concerns uh, that uh, this particular witness is not aware of his rights enshrined in Rule 28. Uh, on this particular point, I think uh, the Council may be mistaken uh, because uh, this was not uh, the only time when the Chamber uh, informed uh, this witness concerning the right not to self-incriminate uh, himself, but uh, actually the investigator of the Office of Co-Investigating Judges must have informed uh, the the uh, witness concerning his right not to see, uh, not to uh, incriminate himself, particularly uh, document E three slash one o three and document D two hundred and thirty four slash one o three. So it is abundantly clear uh, here that uh, the witness is aware of his right. And in addition, the president has de just the defense, uh, the uh, lawyer corrects. Uh, Judge Levenge uh, also mentioned uh, in Laverne, this court uh, that uh, this particular witness uh, does not request any duty counsel with him. So I am of the opinion that this witness is well aware of his right. But uh, since the Defense Council repeats uh, his again and again, and I'm afraid that uh, the, the uh, witness may not uh, understand due to the uh, translation of what he uh, has, what the Defense Council has raised. So I think um, the issue raised by the Defense Council is thus repetitious and okay, improper, even though there is a ruling uh, from the chamber already. Donc, uh, so we are of the opinion that this is an issue that is observed. Absurd, and it adversely affects uh, the witness uh, to tell the truth uh, to the court. And if the defense counsel uh, wishes uh, to raise this issue, uh, then uh, that application should be made in advance and outside the presence of the uh, witness. And if the witness is actually before the chamber and then uh, this matter is raised, then uh, it will adversely affect the feeling of the uh, witness in uh, testifying before the chamber, particularly when uh, they uh, respond to the question put uh, by the uh, prosecution. And we could observe the apparent, apparent uh, hesitation of this uh, particular witness uh, to respond to the question put by the uh, prosecution. And I believe that such application is highly improper, and I would like to uh, support the prosecution uh, assertion that uh, if uh, it is warranted, uh, then there might be uh, an opportunity for cross-examination, uh, uh, confrontation uh, again uh, with uh, Deutsch. The, def the President, uh, the Defense Council for Yingsari, you may proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. I won't be, I won't be long. Uh, first of all, uh, I believe there was a ruling from the bench that was very clear uh, and, and, and quite eloquent as far as how to proceed henceforth with these situations. So I don't think we need to belabor the point as was just done. 
de That's number one. Number two, it's my understanding that the witness had indicated that he didn't understand today as he was being advised. Uh, Hence the reaction from uh, the defense. Uh, so I don't, uh, from my perspective, I don't see any uh, uh, ill attempt by the uh, Nuncia team to do anything improper. I do wish to take the opportunity, however, to uh, raise an issue related to this. Last week in Doik, I reacted several times to the prosecution doing the same thing that we're complaining today. They use the word chilling effect. Last week we had a very clever uh, witness who's been years and years with lawyers, qui a passé des années avec which you cannot compare that witness with this particular witness. Le, la, and yet Bill Smith was standing up and giving Bill long Smith speeches, telegraphing to the witness, and the witness was therefore re there, thereafter reacting. And that's why I think that there, there needs to be a mechanism in place where if we're going to be making sensitive arguments that may influence the testimony or the behavior of the witness, the better practice would be to simply ask the, uh, the court to, to deal with the matter outside the presence of the witness, just like this a very sensitive issue. I agree with the prosecution. It does have a chilling effect, uh, and it could influence a particular witness how he or she would behave on the stand, which is why we need to do that. But we need to do this with other matters as well. And I, that's why I objected last week, strangely, when uh, there were matters being talked about in front of Doik, which obviously gave a very clever witness an opportunity to, to react. Thank you. Um, if I may reply, very briefly, I, I think what's perhaps getting lost in this discussion is the, the, the crux of the matter, the thrust of, of, of Rule 28, is to protect the witness, to protect the witness. And the witness needs to be informed in a way that makes any waiver that he may give an informed waiver, a knowing waiver, a willing waiver, one that's backed by a firm understanding of what it is he's waiving, the consequences of that waiver, etc., etc., etc. And that's very obvious, I think, from the, from the terms of, of Rule 28. So I just want to make it clear in response to what the prosecution said, this was in no way an attempt to protect Nunchia. This was an attempt to protect the witness, to make sure that the witness is aware, fully aware, in a comprehensible manner of his rights. Now, some, I'm getting uh, rolling eyes from the bench there, but that's what I'm talking about. That's what Rule 28 says. And it's the prosecution's duty to do this. It's the bench's duty to do this. So that's all I'll say about that. I would uh, make uh, a reference was made by the lawyers for the civil ceci, parties to previous warnings that were given to the witness. And now, if you look at those previous Alors, warnings, si if you look at those previous warnings, and I'll just quote from one of them, the co-prosecutors wish to impress upon him that they have absolutely no intention of prosecuting him for anything he may have done during the Khmer Rouge era. OCIJ, you will not be prosecuted for events that occurred in Democratic Camp Chia. This is the OCP. The Ça OCIJ, as I've said earlier, of the ECCC. Our position, the prosecution's position, is that there's no telling what the royal government of Cambodia will do. That's the point that I'm trying to make. That's the important point. If, according to the prosecution, Doik may be prosecuted at some future time for events at M13, clearly not by this tribunal, must be by somebody else in this country, the royal government, then the royal government could very likely, well, it's likely it's a possibility, as the prosecution has said, it's a possibility that they may prosecute people. And I should say that the prosecution's suggestion that this witness, that actually no real concerns of liability arise here, well, there's all kinds of modes of liability, and the jurisdictional requirements that apply to this court do not necessarily apply to any future national prosecutions. Aiding and abetting is a very well-established mode of liability, so I think it's unfair to say that this witness is impossible that he would incur liability. It's clear that there's an issue of self-incrimination here, and I think it needs to be dealt with in an informed way, and I've spoken too long. Thank you very much. Question of fond qui est importante.
The chamber notes the opinions raised by the parties concerning the application of Rule 28.8 and 28.9 concerning the testimony of one of the witnesses. En ce qui concerne un des témoins. Through our deliberation, the chamber believe uh, that uh, this issue will not occur again in the future a testimony of witnesses. And we hope that the parties will abide by uh, the rule 28.8. And this rule is expressly clear uh, that uh, in the hearing of uh, testimony of any future witness, then if any moving party requests uh, that uh, the hearing be conducted in camera, uh, then uh, the, the session may be uh, closed uh, from the public, or otherwise uh, this application be made in advance or uh, outside of the presence of the uh, witness. And the chamber on the case-by-case case, uh, basis will uh, rule whether or not uh, we uh, grant uh, the application or not. And in addition, uh, the chambers uh, also get the opinions from the expert and witness uh, support uh, unit concerning the uh, information of the right uh, to uh, not to uh, incriminate uh, himself uh, in pursuant to uh, Rule 28.9, and Judge uh, Levenge has already made it clear uh, on this particular matter concerning what uh, the uh, witness support unit uh, has done concerning the uh, testimony of the witness. And to be uh, precise on that matter, uh, the chamber will uh, advise uh, the support a witness support section concerning the uh, necessary information to be made known to the witness in application of Rule 28.8. And as for other rule, for example, 28.9, uh, the chamber will uh, decide on the uh, application of the rule uh, when the matter arises. Actually, uh, this issue arose in case 001 as well. When we were hearing the testimony of witnesses concerning facts relating to uh, S21, uh, there was a request for designation of a duty council, but uh, that instances uh, were very few. And the discussions uh, this morning among parties, uh, the chamber will have the basis for its uh, conduct of the hearing of the testimony of the witness in the future. If there is no any other matters. Thank you, Your Honor. Just one brief matter before we adjourn for lunch. Will the witness, will our request that the witness be given a new briefing on this issue, will that, has that been granted? Will we have a ruling on that? Given what he said this morning, given the fact that he's unclear, will he be given a new, sorry, will he be given a new briefing by Weisu pursuant to the terms that we've suggested before he resumes his testimony today? And could we please have a ruling on that before he resumes his testimony today? Thank you. The President, uh, thank you. The Chamber has already contacted uh, the Vessu unit to ensure that the witness is um, 
informed of his rights soit en effet bien informé and so that any witness droits. who comes forward uh, would be well informed of his rights when he be notified de sorte à ce que of, uh, tout autre his presence before the chamber and Judge Lavergne already indicated that witness uh, perhaps uh, be que worried uh, after having heard uh, what counsel raises and for that reason uh, duty counsel is uh, assigned to accompany him during his testimony in the afternoon sera uh, Thank you for that clarification, Oui, Maître Yanouzi, il y a une chose yes, qui est absolument Yanuzi, certaine, c'est qu'il ne revient pas aux avocats de la défense de prévenir les témoins de leurs droits. Il n'est pas déjà 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 de leurs droits. Il J'espère que ceci I est suffisamment clair. Chacun clear. doit avoir son rôle. Everyone votre rôle dans la procédure n'est pas role, de donner des conseils aux témoins. Par ailleurs, je veux précise aussi que, en ce qui concerne le témoin qui doit être entendu aujourd'hui, un avocat witness, a été contacté et doit rencontrer ce témoin qui décidera si, oui ou non, il entend être assisté d'un avocat ou s'il renonce à ce droit. Uh, Thank you. Thank you, Judge Levin. That one point is, is not clear to me. Rule 28.8 refers to the duty of a party, any party, where a party is aware, etc., etc. Are you saying that, that we need to disregard the terms of that rule, that we don't have that duty, that we shall not request an in-camera hearing, that we shall request? Maître Yanouzi, est-ce que vous avez Counsel, entendu, comme tout le monde ce matin, le président avertir le témoin de ses droits Est-ce que vous ou non, c'est une formalité qui a été effectuée was this done? I, I... Réponse oui, tout à fait. Bien. Bien. Mais ensuite, j'ai entendu le témoin dire qu'il n'avait pas bien Alors, compris. Je vous ai so, également indiqué à la pause que le témoin avait été informé aussi de ses droits par l'unité d'appui aux experts et aux Wesson. témoins. In, in the... 2011, before the position of the prosecution was made plain, that's the point I've been trying to make. Perhaps I'm just doing a very bad job of making it. That's the point I'm trying to make. That this waiver, this notice, 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 this waiver,
Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I'll be very brief. I just want to Mais announce that uh, Nunchi, I would like to follow the rest of the proceedings from the holding cell. We have the waiver for the usual renunciation signed by him. Thank you. The President, uh, the Chamber has noted the request uh, of Nunji through his counsel. He has asked that he be excused from his courtroom and be allowed to observe the proceeding from his holding cell for the remainder of the day session. The Chamber grants the request and that he is allowed to be excused from this courtroom and observe the proceeding from his holding cell. Nunchi has made it clear he has waived his right to participate in person in this courtroom. The chamber therefore asks that uh, counsel for Nunchi produce the waiver signed or given thumbprint by Nunchi immediately and that the uh, AV board officer is instructed to ensure that uh, the video link, uh, audio video link is well connected to his holding cell so that the accused can observe the proceeding from his uh, room. Security personnel are now instructed to bring Nguyen Chia to his holding cell and uh, bring Kiel Sampon to his uh, holding cell and have him returned uh, to the courtroom by 1.30. Court officer and the security personnel are also instructed to uh, bring the witness to the courtroom by 1.30. The court is adjourned.